listening to the Good Girl Podcast. I am Cameo King, your host. The Good Girl Podcast is a podcast that is redefining the good through uncomfortable truths. I call those uncomfortable truth confessions. And so every week we have someone on with a confession and the goal is to heal, to liberate, and for you to walk in your authenticity. Eh, 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 eh. Eh, eh. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I had, I have had coffee. I have had coffee. Uh, but that is gonna make this show so fun. Um, excited about today's topic, and it is none other than my homie, my home girl, Danny L. Boy in the building. What it do, boo? What's happening? What it do? What it? If you don't know anything about Danny. Um, she is a licensed mental health therapist. She is the practitioner, the chief, I want to call you the chief practitioner in charge <laughs> at, the <laughs> at the Refresh Wellness Center, where her focus is telehealth therapy. And I think that's something that's been kind of a buzzword over the past year, um, going into uh, almost like a year and a half because of COVID. But this is something you've done for since the inception, since the beginning of the Refresh Wellness Center, because you understood the importance of therapy and community. And essentially now when you go into church and you don't want to see your therapist that know all your business. Correct. <laughs> and knows, knows all your business. So, um, Danny, excited to have you back. It's been a minute. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. I miss hey, you, friend. Hey, good girl podcast. I miss y'all. How y'all been doing? Have y'all been drinking your water? Have you been minding your business? I have. have you been exercising? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I've been trying to mind my business that pays me. Mind the business that pays you. Mind the business that pays you. So um, I want to introduce something slightly new to the beginning of the podcast. And it's really is to bring us into the present moment. I think it is so important to be in the present moment and potentially also uh, cast I don't say cast the vision, cast the vision for the week, but we're going to do it in a fun way. And so um, every guest, I'm going to challenge them with a song, right? That will either cast the vision for the week that's coming or the month that's coming or that describes your previous week. But the thing about it, they only have five seconds for me Ooh. to catch on and sing along, catch on and sing along. And I have to do the same. Okay. So it's whatever, whatever is on your heart. So I'm going to give you five seconds. And, and when that five seconds hit, right, you you got to start singing. S sing from your soul, Danny, from your I soul. Sing from my soul. I have to sing. I sing you can rap. You can okay. rap. You can rap. Rapping I can do. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Ready? Uh -huh. Five. Yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. Two. Uh, One. Please don't give me hype. I'm hype. Write my name in ice, ice, hey. ice. Don't argue with these ladies. What? I just raised my price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling bossy. And so, um, you know, and I'm feeling hype. So I feel like, you know, that's the season that I'm in right now. So it's, I love it's, it. please don't get me hype. <laughs> I'm hype. I'm hype. I am all the way hype for... Um, what's going on, what is to come. And I'm just trying to stay in a good headspace so that I can continue to push through. I feel you. I just, I just, I don't want, I don't want you to say that like in a public space and I'm in the audience because I will yell it out from the back, you know? Absolutely. Don't get me, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. <laughs> that, that is, you know, and, and, and if you know us, you know, this is kind of our thing. <laughs> you know, please don't give me hype. I'm hype. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm going to do one. Okay. You going to count me down, Danny? You going to count me down? Five, four, three, two, uno. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Again, girls, what's my weakness? Man. Okay. Okay, man. Chill it. Chill it. Chill it. Mind my Mind business. Mind my business. <laughs> And I couldn't believe this. I swear. Okay. I was because I can sing this whole whole song. Um the reason this is my song for the week, because I have honestly, I have been encouraged by connecting with some men, like some good, what I consider to be good men. They have reinvigorated. <laughs> You know, almost in a sense, my desire for dating and my hope that there actually are some decent men out there, right? So that's where that's where that's where my headspace is. Okay. 
okay. That's not my head. Okay, okay. I'm wearing it. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> So what are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? Um, and so this actually kind of goes along uh, with the theme. And we are talking about why women are responsible for carrying the weight of men's issues. That's kind of a heavy one, right? It's big. Why women are responsible for carrying the weight of men's issues. And so what I don't want this to be is I don't want this to be divisive 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 i don't know the correct pronunciation but um because i i think there's a lot of media a lot of rhetoric out there that places one group of people against the other group of people and that's what i don't want to do what i really want to do hopefully in this conversation is to reveal to um, both men and women and individuals that sometimes a lot of times that our behaviors are connected to deeper issues and that those issues oftentimes aren't addressed and they're just affirmed by the same rhetoric. They're affirmed by the same dating styles. They're affirmed by just a, little, just a lot of things that we circulate on these internet streets that really aren't healthy, right? They're not healthy for either party. And I'm so glad um, Danny is here with her expertise and understanding very much the ramifications of our social um, of our relationships, our social circles, and just how we show up in relationships, just how our issues show up in, in relationships. So, um, Danny, when you first hear that, when you first hear that, that phrase, why women are responsible for carrying the weight of men's issues, what do you, what do you think? Do you, do you, yeah, what do you think? Well, um, quite honestly, we've had previous conversations about it, and I believe it was me who articulated it in that, in that phrase. Um, is that, you know, it seems to me that when women historically have been responsible for carrying the weight of men's issues and we are expected to absorb whatever their shortcomings are in order to be in relationship with them. Um, and, you know, it, our, our entire lives and livelihood is supposed to be shaped around our value and what we our value to a man and what we can do for a man, how we can be of service to him, how we can mother his children and be his wife and, you know, take care of his um, domestic needs. Um, and so, and then when men are vulnerable or not vulnerable, when men are uh, promiscuous, when men, when men are sexually aggressive, when men are aggressive in any type of way, when men mishandle women in any type of way, the responsibility of that is always placed on the woman. The question is always, what did you do? What did you do to trigger him? Or what aren't you doing that has triggered him? There's always historically has been a lack of accountability for men to accept responsibility for their own behavior and it not be based on what a woman is or isn't doing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to break this down into three areas, basically. So how does this show up? Um, how, how is this true? Right. Cause I think a lot of times we say stuff, we, we, we throw things out there. We don't provide any proof, right. We throw opinions out there and we take it as true. And so I broke it down into three areas. Um, one is submission. The other is money. And then the last is what I hear often and which is what I think is really damaging. But it's this idea. And I, I typically only hear it from men, right? Or young men. Um, I'm, I don't want to insult folks. So I'm just going to say men or young men. And, <laughs> and it's, and it's packaged in, this is the worst advice possible, right? So I'm going to play a little clip for you, but we're not going to talk about this until the end, but I'm going to play a little clip. And I don't, Danny, oh, Danny hasn't, <laughs> she hasn't seen this clip. So Danny may throw a computer, you know, after she sees this clip. I mean, if you're not wanting me to react to this right away, are you sure you want me to play? <laughs> just listen, just listen, just listen. Here we go. Here we go. And the worst dating advice that women receive goes as the following. 
you're young. Don't worry about men. Chase your career, chase the bag, build your empire, and then later on in your 30s, the men will come. That is the worst dating advice women receive. And I get so many DMs, emails. that I made it through the rest of the video, right? And so I have a part two of the clip. But that's, I think, a part of what started this conversation. But we're going to talk about that later. So just hold that if you can, Danny. Just hold that if you can, if you're listening, folks, because we're going we're gonna to go into that later. But um, again, when we talk about why women are responsible for carrying the weight of men's issue, when I think about control and submission, I typically only hear um, the word submission in terms of a relationship with men who have not uh, developed a healthy self-identity. And in other words, they are looking to, I'll say fulfill, or they're looking to um, solidify their identity in a woman's submission to them. So in a sense, therefore, because I am man, uh, or I am man because a woman submits to me, not I am man because I stand alone as a man, and these are the standards I have for manhood. Um, and I think that that is connected to control because if this woman doesn't necessarily submit to you, if she doesn't do what you desire, and I don't know if that's how everyone defines submission, and maybe we can go into that. But when I hear submission colloquially, that's typically, I think, how most people hear it, right? They don't hear it in a way that I think it is really practical in a marriage. And when I say practical in a marriage, I just posted this randomly on my Facebook page and I asked, you know, for married couples only to tell me what does submission look like in a marriage? And all of the answers <laughs> from married couples said submission looks like both parties submitting to a common goal, not the woman submitting to the man. But and when I when they say goal, it's for the success of a marriage. So understanding that there are multiple parts to a marriage, right? You have the individual, you have one individual, two individuals, and then you have this marriage. So what do we need to do to ensure that this marriage is successfully? What is successful? What what do we need to do individually to make sure that this marriage is successful? Um, and so that is my understanding of submission. I guess I'll call it collective submission, but we're not gonna go there. But so um, when there is this almost overarching uh, overarching theme, this very in, in, intentional conversation from men to women, especially early on in the dating process about submission, to me, it very much connects to control because your identity is rooted in how a woman performs. And if that said woman doesn't perform, that connects to your idea of your ideal of what it means to be a man, then you're shook, right? I'm not a man. And so therefore you try to control how she, how she shows up through submission. Um, so your identity is solidified. That's, that's how I feel. Danny, I don't know about you though. I mean, I think what you just explained really boils down to insecurity. <laughs> If a man is secure in his manhood, he will seek to control. Or if a man has experienced trauma where he feels like he hasn't been heard or like he doesn't have a voice, he will look for something to um, have dominion over. Men like to have dominion. We, they've been groomed and cultured to have dominion. Um, and so sometimes there's a fine line between having dominion and being um, and having control over someone. And when you have insecurities, you lean more into that. I have to be in control, even if it's in a perverse, perverse or inappropriate way. Um, and so if, you know, a man is feeling insecure about his manhood or himself, and he, uh, his manhood is secured by external factors instead of internal factors, mm -hmm. then he's going to seek to control his environment and his relationships. Yeah. When you, when you say that manhood and internal factors, it, it, it really directly very much con connects back to our last podcast 
when we had a man on, Emery Lawrence, he was talking about how manhood was defined for him. And he was essentially taught all the wrong things that equated manhood and how you really do have to seek internally what like what satisfies your soul outside of money, power, respect? You know, what what are some of those things? Um, yeah. Um, money, sweet money, power, respect. Let's go into money. <laughs> um, money, power, respect. What you need in life, money, hey. power, respect. You need in life, yeah. money, power, respect. Um, you'll see the light. <laughs> um, so uh, money. Now I began to have this conversation because honestly, there was an expectation I had about how a man should show up financially in a relationship. And when I say relationship, I'm specifically talking about marriage. Like what should he be responsible for? And I had this, I'll call it eye opening, or you can call it humbling conversation (laughs) with um, my brother about my expectations. But it wasn't that I, it, it was more so asking myself, it should is this a good expectation to have? Should I have this expectation um, of a man? And it was about um, mortgage, right? Um, my stomach is kind of sinking because I feel like I was really wrong in having this expectation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, it, it was. I think it's because I was connecting this idea of protection and safety to a man taking care of like the mortgage and that, and that is my expectation. And so um, having this conversation, let's speed this up, having this conversation with another friend, she was essentially saying, well, you have to understand this is how men are raised. This is what men want to do. Like they want to be able to provide, they want to be able to be the breadwinners in the home. And so we as women have to then reconsider uh, you know, essentially how much money we make, <laughs> how we're moving up the corporate ladder. Like in a sense, when I am successful, we have to consider how that is going to affect how a man shows up in our relationships. And I was like, really? Because I expect to be a high earner. And um, which led me to the conversation about, is that is that for real? I asked my brother, is that for real? And And I asked you, Danny, is that real? And what did you say? <laughs> I um, don't remember exactly what I said. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell I you. Know, go ahead. I'll, say, I'll tell you what you said. You said it's control. My brother said it's control. You know, it. That's yes. what it comes down. That's, <laughs> yes. that's what it comes down. like a man who who doesn't want you to be successful. A man who wants to limit your success, be it. Um, moving up the corporate ladder, be it expanding your brand, or if it's something as direct as you making more money than him, that is control. And that's what it comes down to. Yep, control. But again, back to insecurity. Because, it, you you know, if you feel insecure and you want to be in control and you're still functioning from this space of me and you instead of us, Mm. it doesn't matter who makes the most money if it's all us. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't matter which pot of money the mortgage is coming from if it's all ours. So that whole line of thinking is problematic. I understand that you're just like, if, you know, I show up to the table and me as a woman, I am a high earner and I make more than you um, and you earn whatever it is that you earn um, and the money to pay mortgage is coming from my account. I mean, I think, you know, again, for men, they are wired to, well, not wired, they're groomed. (laughs) They Mm -hmm. have been groomed to believe that they are supposed to be the breadwinners. They are supposed to be, you know, the king of their castle. And they do, for most men, they do feel a way when they aren't able to provide in that way. But not being able to, there's a difference between not be not being able to provide in that way and the woman just makes more money than you. <laughs> like, there's a difference there, you know? Yeah, be- and so, go ahead. No, I'm saying because when we were having this conversation off screen, we talked about other ways that men provide. 
Um, and it was really connected to being needed, right? Yeah. This idea yeah. that men needs to, and, I, and like, I'm like, oh, yeah, who doesn't want to, <laughs> who doesn't want to feel needed, especially um, the person you're in the relationship with. But if the only reason I need you is to pay my bills, that's problematic. You know, it's a um, transactional relationship. It's prostitution with a legal license. Is what it is. <laughs> and that's what far too many people are in those type of relationships, you know, where they are um, far too many people are in those type of relationships where they are just with someone who is essentially paying their bills and no shade. Like I'm not, you know, that this isn't a space of judgment, but the reason why, you know, women who are high earners and have um, their careers and have more going for themselves by the time they actually end up in a marriage or a relationship, the reason why it, it gets more challenging for them, because, you know, they're not with someone based on their perceived needs or their deficits. And mm -hmm. you have um, a lot of people who set themselves up to be in relationships in this way. There are a lot of men who want you to be completely dependent on them so that they can have control over what you do, where you go, how you flow, all of those things, instead of allowing you to be who you are and show up the way that you're supposed to show up. And so... Lost um, me for a second, but I'm here. <laughs> there, there's that. And so, um, you know, that becomes problematic only for, again, men who are insecure. When men are self-aware and secure with themselves, they still may have a need to be needed, but it's not always connected to money. You know, I need for you to do the things for me that money can't buy. Now, let me be clear. I need you to do some things that money can't buy. I like <laughs> those things too. We definitely, I'm, not definitely. Saying, I'm not saying that I don't, you know, but if, if I show up in this relationship where I'm able to secure my own livelihood, you don't ever have to worry about me wanting you, wanting to be with you. I'm with you because I want to be with you. Not because I need for you to provide for me financially. Too many people are in relationships where they're being tolerated. And then they end up getting mishandled and mistreated. And then Say that again. It, Say that again. Too many people are in relationships where they are being tolerated and they end up being mishandled and mistreated by their partner. You're in a relationship because you know, for one reason or another, it, it may not have started out that way, you know, um, but the situation that you're in right now, you may not be able to leave it because it's uncomfortable for you, you know, um, you know, just even counseling some of my couples right now and some of my clients, you know, and, and where, you know, someone is just like, you know, I want to leave the relationship, but I know I can't afford to live here or I can afford to live here but things will be really tight and it won't be as comfortable as it is. Um, you know, or I want to leave the relationship, but I don't want to, you know, break up that, break up our family unit and want there to be issues with our kids. But then your kids are watching you all be toxic toward each other. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's all these different types of things going on where you have people who have grown apart for one reason or another. And you're in relationships where, you know, you need the other person, you rely on them, you're dependent upon them in some way, shape or form. And the it just causes the relationship to deteriorate even more. And it's just really the, sad and unfortunate. The other component that you brought up when you talk about these dynamics was also how Black women are oftentimes left holding the bag because we put ourselves in these positions where we are dependent financially on a man. Well, so let me, so, so for anyone who is in a relationship where children um, are born, there's going to be a point in time where she has to be taken care of by me. 
That's just what it is. Like there's only so much you can do physically, right? Um, you're going to have to be taken care of at some point in time and there's no getting around that. And so you want to be with someone who you trust, who actually has the capacity to take care of you if y'all have decided to bring children into the relationship. Um, but for Black women, it's a very complex situation um, from both ends because let's just talk about the real, the, the reality of being a Black woman in a relationship and not being able to trust that your partner is going to be there. You can have a partner who is faithful, who loves you, who adores you, who supports you, and who is collecting the bag. And your partner can still be taken away from you at any given point in time, especially a Black man. A Black man can be taken exactly. away from you at any given point in time by just being a Black man in America, being in the mm -hmm. wrong place at the wrong time, and the police feel like ending his life. That is a very real fear. So either the police feel like ending his life or the police feel like, um, you know, harassing him and um, trumping up some charges, um, making up charges, doing anything to get him to be a part of the criminal justice system where say, slavery is still legal. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when people don't talk about that, we have very real issues with, you know, institutionalized systems that take our men from us. And so it doesn't matter if you start out very well intentioned with your black man, the, there is an extremely high likelihood that you are going to be a single parent at some point in the relationship. And so when you find black families who are together, you know, the couple made it and, and it's been years down the line, it's like, man, like, you know, that's just awesome. You know, it's awesome. It's awesome to see. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to say their names, but one of my favorite couples and one of my very dear friends, um, and if she listens to this podcast, of course, she'll be able to identify herself, but one of my very dear friends, beautiful marriage, beautiful family, you know, has been married for over 20, 20 years, been together since they were teenagers and whatnot. Um, and now, you know, her, her kids are grown and now she has grandkids and, you know, they got an Instagram family and, and, and they're real cute, you know. But there was a point in time where her husband was snatched from her when they were young and was in prison, you mm -hmm. know, and she waited for him and they had a young son and she waited for him. And then he got out, you know, and built his brand in his business. And she's been working where she's been working. And, you know, their family is beautiful and together. And that's how the story is ending, per se. But for a lot of people, it's split lot. You might have started out with everything on the front end, and then your husband is snatched from you, or your partner is snatched from you, and then you don't have them on the back end. And it's not this, you know, growing old together, or they were taken. You know what I mean? And or you know, getting lost to um, death because of health issues. You know what I mean? They also had a health scare that he yeah. just happened to catch because he was pressing about it. Yeah. But doctors wasn't checking for it. just anything you know and so like I there's there's a very real situation with black women when it comes to these relationships where we end up getting left holding the bag and being by ourselves so to have all of this scrutiny around yeah. us being independent around us making our own money around us acquiring credentials around uh, around us you know showing up to the table because we own the table and and not being you know restricted to a pie mentality because we got the recipe and we baking whole pies <laughs> we don't need a piece of the pie we we got the recipe we can make as many pies as we, as we want <laughs> you know to have all of this scrutiny around us being go-getters you know and it being weaponized against us as yes. less desirable be, being less desirable partners is the most asinine thing I've ever heard of. And I could talk all day about that. It, 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 <laughs> I don't even want to play this clip now. <laughs> the clip that we played earlier, because it leads right into that clip. 
Um, and I don't, I don't know why a lot of us support this type of mentality. Uh, both, I, I understand why men support it because it, it helps fill that gap and that hole of insecurity. Um, and it's easier to project that onto someone else than it is to actually go to therapy or get healing or look inside of yourself. But yeah. for women, I don't get it. I, I, I legitimately don't. Maybe it's because too, we've been trained as well that our identity rests in a relationship, that our identity um, is only seen uh, as good, or as great, or as though you achieved the highest of highs when you have a family or when you are married, right? And again, I want to be clear that I'm not saying that you sh- that you cannot aspire to that, but that is not the foundation of who anyone is. Um, and you've said it consistently. If and I'm paraphrasing, but if your identity is found in something outside of you, eventually you're gonna have an identity crisis. You sure are. You're going to have a breakdown and you're going to be in my office, <laughs> professionalcenter.com. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, you if, if you are showing up and you are living, uh, you're showing up as, as these fragments and pieces of yourself because you're living up to other people's ideas of you. Yeah. You are eventually going to crash and burn mentally and emotionally. And you're going to end up in crisis. You're going to end up stressed out, anxious, depressed. And end up bleeding on the people who didn't hurt you because you are out here trying to live up to, you know, some idea that doesn't align with your core values or your true desired outcomes. Your true and desired so outcomes. Why not be in a place where you become self-aware and where you lean into what you want from yourself early on so that you are able to um, make better relationship choices? People, so many people make relationship choices based on superficial things and based on um, based on the wrong things, which is why far too many people end up divorced. And I'm just, you know, in a place where in my own personal life and where I'm encouraging people, if you do the work up front, then you won't end up in divorce court later, you know. Of course, there are some, you know, you 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 want to be attracted to the person, you know, and there are some superficial things that help the relationship come together. Yes. But the substance, the, the substance. substance is what's going to hold you together when the relation, when all of that superficial stuff fades. Right. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the substance of a person that you need holding your hand when you have to bury your loved ones at some point. It's going to be the substance, you know, of a person that you're going to need that those vows that people say and don't mean you know this for better or for worse that people really don't mean for worse when people hit worse they roll out and um it wasn't so, this type of worse <laughs> yeah you know therefore worse is you know oh you had a cold today <laughs> there, therefore worse is not you know oh it's th- that cold is because you have a terminal illness it's just not it's not the same um mm-hmm. You know, the substance of a person and and who they are at their core is who you want to make sure that you're aligned with so that yeah. you guys have a positive synergy toward who you all are supposed to be as individuals and collectively. Yeah. yeah. So um, what I want to do is I want to play both of these clips again. And I want us to, because the narrative of both of these clips are so harmful, to both men and women and individuals. It's so harmful. Um, and so I wanna play these clips and um, very much push back on it. Um, so here we go, here's the first one. I played this one earlier. And the worst dating advice that women receive goes as the following. You're young, don't worry about men, chase your career, chase the bag, build your empire, and then later on in your 30s, the men will come. That is the worst dating advice women receive. And I get so many DMs. And the reason why it's so terrible advice is because that advice applies to men. Hmm. It does not apply to women because getting a career, getting the bag, 
building your empire are all masculine things. And those masculine things attract females, mm. heterosexual females. Those are those things are going to attract. <laughs> the first thing you I said is who raised you Interesting y'all? to me. Who raised <laughs> well, y'all? Who raised y'all? Like, that was really my first question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go. 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 <laughs> These men, these these insecure men who ascribe to toxic masculinity, who have platforms, are just really on my last nerve. <laughs> like, on why, me. sir? Why? Like, why? I, like, I, you are checking these. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do when we ain't married and don't have nobody taking care of us, even if we are married? You think that's your prop? That is- calm down. Exactly. Me hype. I'm hype. <laughs> Hi. It is so annoying to me that you have one set of men who are mad if you function from um, a place where you are expecting to be taken care of by a man and you want to be a housewife and, and such, right? Like mm-hmm. it, like you're signing up for this. You you don't really want to work. You want to be a housewife. You want to have kids. You want to, you know, you want to just be a stay-at-home mom. And being a stay-at-home mom is a pretty big deal. So it's not just a stay-at-home mom. It's a whole five jobs, okay? Um, being a stay-at-home mom is not something that's easy. However, on the other hand, you have men who are bashing women for wanting to be taken care of. Then on the other hand, you're bashing us for getting out and securing the bed. Which one is it? Make up your mind. It sounds very shit to me. Like, y- y'all don't know what y'all want. You're going to complain about what we do no matter what. It's always going to be some insecure man who ascribes to toxic logic um, on some platform with too much energy, too much bass in his voice, and too much, um, too much of his insecurities and his little fra- fragile manhood um, on display, where you are weaponizing women's weaponizing. strengths and calling it masculine. It's masculine for you to secure the bag. What? It's masculine for you to be an entrepreneur. It's ma- Why is that a masculine thing? That's not masculine. That's just a thing. You know what I mean? You attach your manhood to money and, and what you can and what you can provide. External things again. Okay. And so okay. these are the same. These are the same type of men who say stuff like, "You won't let me. You won't let a man be a man." If your manhood is wrapped up in me showing up as fragments and pieces of myself, not being assertive, not being able to provide for myself. I, where are you even getting this? Like, I'm the Proverbs 31 woman. You can't say it's biblical. I mean, she was a whole boss. So where? Where, where, where is this logic coming from? Where, who, who, where is it like, coming from? It, but even if you follow the logic, Danny, so, it, so if I was on this train, it still makes no sense. None. <laughs> None. It makes no sense no whatsoever. Sense. None. Because if I followed the logic, so am I, so what then am I, and I, could, I couldn't bear through the entire video. So my homegirl sent it to me and she said, this is what we have to be aware of because this is what we're fighting against, uh, quote unquote, as women who want to empower women to uh, walk in their authentic, authenticity, to be the best version of themselves. And so, so no. even, even, even if I were to follow this logic, it would still very much leave women just out there. It's like just dangling and waiting as though we're just waiting in a pool for men just to come and pick us up. So we are perfect and prepped and primed for their use. That's the thing about it. Like yep. you're, for their use. For and their that's use. it. Not for my enrichment, not for yep. my fulfillment of life, not for me to reach my highest. And, and when we talk about purpose and we talk about wanting the ideal man, the ideal man don't want you just, and, and wait, before I say this, I don't like putting guidelines and rules out there because I believe there's so many nuances, so many, um, 
different things that people want. But I do believe that there are some baseline things. For example, everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a purpose. Our our purpose fulfills parts of our soul and our spirit that like nothing else can. It can bring us joy. It can bring us happiness. It can bring us peace. Um, and some of these, it can connect us to God. And for a man to not want you to know that or to discover that at any point in your life, someone that you want to partner with, what is he really doing? What, He's what are, not. It's the, the real issue is far too many men don't even like women apart from what they can do for him. Say a whole word. They don't. Mm-hmm. They, they, don't, they don't like to hear women think. They don't like to see women on, on the move. They don't like to see women be aggressive. That's masculine. It's for men to do. Ugh. Like, <laughs> your whole manhood is threatened because I make my own money. Who's supposed to take care of me? What what ha- what happens if something happens to you? God what forbid happens if something happens to you, sir. You're a black for- man in America. Listen, God happens? forbid if you are in- incapacitated for a month, right? And then I'm sitting there, don't know how to run the household, don't know where the bills and the money has come from, don't know nothing about nothing, just because I'm prepped and pre- like. Yes, very real situation. Someone's husband died last year and they didn't know how to do anything. They didn't know how to pay any bills. They didn't know what money came from where. They didn't know nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and by the way, that person's husband was blind for probably the last 10, 15 years of their marriage. Wow. Wow. Still, wow. 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 When you talk about the content, when you talk about the content, oh child. And so, and so also I think what this narrative speaks to, it also I think it hits on the insecurities of women. And when I say that, so when you talk about like the physical appearance and what women su- supposedly bring to a relationship, but when I say insecurities and also these false narratives that were told, narratives like this, like his, make it seem that happiness comes from a man. Happiness comes from a relationship. Should your relationship be a part of your happiness? Yes. Should your partner be a part of uh, things that bring you joy? No doubt. But it is not the foundation, right? Um, And conversations like he had very much positions the man as though he is holding like this this life source <laughs> that you can only if get. the world revolves around him. He is literally seeing this is a man's world um, but without the part that says, but it would be nothing without a woman or a little girl. You know, he, he, this man is a total and complete narcissist and I'm willing to go ahead and say it. Don't <laughs> write me. Um, Don't but write men me. who function from that space, that's, that's a mm-hmm. narcissistic perspective, you know, yeah. where I don't want a woman who has the ability to do anything because what that really equates to me is, she can leave me at any given point in time and she doesn't have to carry the weight of my lack of substance. Yep. She doesn't have to carry the weight of my shortcomings. She doesn't have to carry the weight of my bad sex that I think is ending. She doesn't have to carry the weight of my fragile masculinity and toxicity. She doesn't have to carry any of that mm-hmm. because she doesn't need me financially. She can go out and secure her own bag and she can get with somebody who actually has a bit more substance. Somebody said to me, somebody told me a man said this to them, and I want to add to it. They told me that this man said to them, um, our accomplishments erase our age. And I want to add to that man. He said, was a man. Uh He said, our accomplishments erases our age. And I was like, that's real good. But I also want to add to that. It also erases your shortcomings and lack of substance. When men are what to do, it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter how young they are. There is, are always a line, a whole host of women that are willing yeah. to tolerate whatever their shortcomings are 
Yeah. There is no way a man as shallow as 45 would be able to marry a Russian model if it wasn't because of his resources and yeah. him being rich yeah. and powerful, so to speak. You don't have I, enough substance to keep anybody's attention in that way. Like, yeah. I think, too, it, it, it connects to this conversation of high value men and how some people are really buying into, again, this narrative that, first of all, that you're putting value on human beings, which I think is trash. But I think it's a way to communicate what we have, what you just said, where there will be a line of women uh, waiting for a man with these, I'll call them superficial characteristics. Very superficial. Money, money, height. Good looks, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, and and so because I was gonna say something else, um, <laughs> um, but it, but it, but it's not. I, I I didn't date this guy, but we were talking for a while, and it's as though so I'll say this: it makes it as though that these type of men have all of the women at their disposal. Like all yeah. I have to do is go and pick. But let me tell you, you don't. It's a two way street. You don't have women. It is a two way street. You don't have women of substance and you don't you have don't. women who want to be about anything. I, same boat. I was talking to this guy that I've decided just not to talk to him anymore because he well to do. He has the shiny, flashy car. He's tall and fine, y'all. The man is fine. Fine <laughs> black man. Jesus, he's fine. <laughs> but oh God, he's so shallow. <laughs> He's so shallow. He's probably one of the most shallow men that I've ever talked to. His communication oh, wow. sucks. You know, um, his the way that he talks is very um, abrasive and condescending mm -hmm. and almost sounds like a little kid um, who doesn't have good vocabulary at all. Um, and so, and it's very frustrating to talk to somebody where it feels like you're dialoguing back and forth with a kid and you can't even have a regular conversation. And then on top of that, always have something negative to say. And, and Danny, the thing about it, I've had that same experience. There's a guy who tried to come back around full circle and I cut him off, but he tried to come back around full circle because he's looking for a, a wife. And um, he was like, cameo, I always thought you were dope, yada, yada, yada. But when I tell and he has all the things I think that a quote unquote high value man would desire. And I've even seen some things that he said on social media about women with children, how you are as valuable. And he and we've had conversations. He was like, no, I don't think I should be obligated or I waited and I wrapped and I wrapped up. Um, so why should I have to suffer or why should I have to take care of another person's child? Like this was his, this was his, his, these are some of the things he said. And he, and he considered himself high value, high value because he was tall, because he had a degree, uh, because he was, he was very good with his money. Um, he works in finances. Um, and, and like he had, has like all these quote unquote ducks in a row, but the dude was trash. <laughs> like his character was complete trash and we're expected to absorb the weight and to carry the weight of his trash behavior and his lack of substance when you and that and that's what this whole conversation is about yes. this conversation is about how women have historically had to be responsible for the shortcomings of men and for the lack of character integrity substance etc of men and how if you value anything about yourself, your purpose, or your destiny, you don't have to ascribe to any of these toxic narratives. I know that it's very tempting to succumb to some of these things, especially the older you get. And, you know, if you still find yourself single, um, it can be harder and make you feel like you, you know, may want to um, compromise or settle, you know, but you'll just find yourself frustrated and you'll end up in a broken relationship. And so um, it's just my encouragement today that don't allow anyone to ascribe any negative labels to you. It is not up to a man to determine what your worth or your value is. And your value isn't determined by how you are connected to a man. You're, you are valuable just as is. 
you are valuable because God decided that you needed to be on this earth during this time and in this season, the end. Nothing else. If, well, if there was nothing else, the fact that you have breath in your body makes you it. valuable, mm -hmm. makes you that's enough. It. And if you um, are struggling in that area where with, you know, self-worth or value, know that the very fact that you have breath in your body, you are valuable and you have a purpose to fulfill. And that purpose is not connected to how you can be of value to a man. Not at all. Well, Danny, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. As always, I hope you all pulled something from this. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our podcast um, through whatever platform you get your podcast on. And also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on all social media. Thank you so much for listening to the Good Girl Podcast. And I hope you continue to believe in the good.